never say I wish I had is an expression that has motivated me. All summer I passed a road sign announcing Rowing Lessons Lake Sunapee Rowing Club. I decided that this was my time to say, never say I wish I had rowed a shell. The rowing club provides the boats and I registered for the novice classes. There are two types of rowing. In sculling, each rower has two oars or skulls, one in each hand. In sweep rowing, each rower has one oar held with both hands. I would experience both skull and sweep rowing. My first boat would be a quad skull designed for four persons who held the boat by sculling with two oars, one in each hand. Card, here we go. George's Mills, Steve, it's Sunday the 19th of July, 2015, his first class in the sculling, aka rowing class. There's about 10 people here, plus the instructor, Steve's first class. Going down to the water, he's got his paddles. Here we are, they're getting ready to get out there first thing in the morning, 6.15 a.m. Sunday. 19th of July. He's Steve on the end, he's got his end. Two, three, five, six, seven, one. Ready up. The shoes go off. Ready to go in the water. Into the water they go. The boat is known as a shell. Back to the water, back to the boat, back to the shell. And Steve, just exactly right with the collar and the button on the inside of the oarlock. So you can you know, bring that just across like Tracy has hers. Bring it, bring it across, Steve. Pull it in. So in that, Brenda Lee, bring those oars across until you're ready to get in the boat. Charlie, Rose, the coach here, is Brenda. Don't step at the bottom of the boat anywhere. She just says, well, that's not it. You gotta put your, okay, it's like shoes in there. Each one you put your feet in there. to go out. And find your seat. Just have a seat. There we go. Kathy, can you stick your right foot over and just push against the... Oh, I think not. Yep. Oh, Tracy, it looks like Tracy's done. So, uh, grab your oar handle, Steve, and you're going to put them behind your knees to pull them back into your lap there. And then you're going to reach, yeah, just like you have them. And use both hands to push your feet in. Let your oars go down to the water and reach over and put your feet in. Tracy, my feet into the shoes. Tracy, go ahead and get in. Uh huh. But I gotta put my socks on. Yeah. Yeah. You can do all of that now. If one leans over too far, will they all go over? No, because they have the oars out and the oars are their training wheels. So if I were to go over and grab that boat and lift up, it wouldn't go anywhere. Huh? As long as their huh. hands are together. Okay. If they all put their hands apart or let go of an oar, we could definitely thump. There they go.
Relax your shoulders, Steve. Relax your shoulders and sit up tall. And you're gonna go all the way up to the catch. You're only going three quarters of the way. All the way up with your seat. Knees are not quite vertical here. And take your time, Steve. Susan's having a hard time following because you're racing up to the catch. And here we have the dinner boat going by in the distance. We'll wave to them, see if they can beep their horn at us. We're avoiding some uh, thunderstorms that went past us to the north. We decided to go out on the water and we have a quad here. Steve is in three seat in the quad. So Steve's working on timing and here he's uh, leading this middle pair. So Sue is actually matching his timing. trying to get that left oar off the water on the recovery if you see he catches the water there. So we're thinking about low hands on the recovery which is this part right here all the way up into the catch. And he's really struggling a little bit catching the blade every time. stern in the set position. So their oars are braced on their thighs as well as on the top of the water with the scoops up. And that is a training wheel for the bow pair who are rowing so it stabilizes the boat and gives it a good foundation. You want to be in a good position in the set position so that when it's your turn to row, the other pair does that favor for you as well. And here we have Willow up in the bow of the boat. She's my assistant coach and she's looking out at the quad, wondering what's going to happen next over here. Casey is rowing and we're going to add Steve in in just a moment. So he goes from the release and matches KC after the two is called and he did a pretty good job there. And he's not rowing square blades which means that his oars are not squared up and they're getting dragged down into the bottom of the lake catching a crab when he goes in on the feather or under squared. If you look at his blade want that blade to be completely vertical instead of on a slant. And that's a pretty big wake that's just come through from the power boat. Sorry if we wobbled quite a bit. So here we see Steve working on getting his hands nice and low. He was, that's a high, high hands there, high again. Rowing over a barrel is what we call that when your hands are up so high. So what are we doing, Kelly? Right now we're rigging the boat. That one actually goes on the side. Oh, it does? Yep. Okay. So this is, uh, I guess, maiden voyage for the, uh, season? For the season. <laughs> Don't you feel good about that? Oh, I feel great. <laughs> 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 All right,
I don't think there's a hole in the bottom. <laughs> I don't see one. <laughs> Kelly, did, which one does it go in? The top, the middle, or the bottom here? There are three. Um, this slid on. I have it on the bottom. The bottom one? The bottom, whichever one looks most worn. It's probably the bottom. Yep. And there's one washer. That goes on the front. This one? Yeah. Oh, you got a nut. Okay, so I'm missing one nut. Oh, there's one here. I just took a procedure. Oh. And then now we're going to tighten it up. Kelly, do you know what? And obviously the ringers go on in a certain way. Yep. So that the ore locks are where the... And probably the holes are yeah. drilled so that it only fits one way. <laughs> Don't put them on backwards <laughs> like you did. Yeah, the ore locks a certain way when they... Uh, um, so that they pivot right. Because if the ore lock is this way and you try and pivot, mm -hmm. the ore ends up at a much steeper angle as opposed to pivoting around. It tries to pivot on the inside and it doesn't work I well. see. So you put the opening towards... Uh, yeah. Towards the stern. Towards the stern. Okay. Because yeah. think about it. If there was a back stay on this rigger, it would go from right here to here. So you right. want to make sure it's facing that way. I'm the rookie here. We have a, a new boat to the club that uh, we purchased. Brent is our coach here, so she's trying out this new shell to make sure it uh, it's fine. She's never used that. She wants to make sure when I use it that it does the right stuff if you do the right thing. And these two young ladies are getting ready to do the two-person shell. Oh, my God. Get ready to take off here. And here comes Brenda. That's good. She's ready for you. Okay, thank you very much, Brenda. Here we have Steve's first time in the single. This is called a dolphin. It's a Pinert, made by Pinert Boat Company. And um, he's been on the water for about a minute and a half now. He's very tense, a little bit shaky. Um, learning how to find the set position, keep his hands together trying to make a little bit of a turn here. He could get wet tonight. Okay, so we just got Steve out from being in too close to the boats. It's headed back out, trying to figure out how to take some strokes with his arms and body, no legs. And these are just little strokes. He's dragging the blades on top of the water for some stability. You can see that's being done very nicely. That's a difficult concept sometimes. And he's taken right to that because he likes the stability. You can see that he does better when his hands are together than when they come apart. And there's a little quick look. He's uh, starting to be aware of what's front of his bow. He's swinging the body a little bit even. And there he goes, he takes a break, just like we discussed, um, just to let the tension out and reset. Pretty good.
good job of pulling his hands all the way into his body here. We struggled a little bit with rigging this boat because it's uh, brand new to the club. It's a heavily used boat out of Boston. It's been well loved. It's got some uh, Charles River grit uh, discoloration on it. We'll have to get cleaned up. She doesn't have a name either. She needs a name. Maybe Steve will come up with a name from his time in it today. So interestingly enough, Steve's gotten himself wrapped up with uh, the no-wake buoy here in George's Mills, which uh, I don't understand why it happens, but they uh, suck the boats right in. There's lots of water here, and if you tried to hit one of these buoys, it would be a little difficult to do. He's managed not only to hit it, but it's as if it has a magnet, and it's got a hold of his boat, and it's pulling him in. And he's struggling mightily as to how to get past this. There he goes. He's going to push that buoy away. He's going to cuss at it in a minute. I don't know Steve well enough to know if he cusses, but been hung up here for a couple of minutes and he's learned how to back which is a good skill to know he's putting the oars in the water and uh, pushing them from, away from his body so he's making some progress he's moving around but you can see that he's still right up against the buoy there he goes, a little more backing. There's just a touch of a wind out here tonight. We've got some really nice flat water, but the wind seems to be uh, catching him up. All right, now we have open water between the buoy and his bow ball, poor guy. One more backing stroke here. There we go, boy is he determined. Very shaky. Hands together, hands together. There he goes. He's figuring it out. He's trying to turn. Sorry if I just missed there. He's trying to turn so he's got the left oar down on his thigh and the right oar gets squared up. And thank goodness he's made it by the bow, the buoy. KC is pausing at the finish here. It's a new drill to me. Uh, I've paused at the finish before, but never with the blades feathered on top of the water. And what this does is it forces the rower to learn exactly the correct place for the handles to be at that release, which is a hard thing to teach. It's hard to get people to realize exactly where on the body it's supposed to be. And this just defines it because if we look at her blade, when it comes out, there it is right on the water. Pretty cool. Casey's suggestion is that we call this the dragonfly. And already her oar is uh, much more controlled, less up in the air, and not so deep in the water, although that was a deep stroke too. And she's got some good body swing happening here. Nice posture. Long legs. We're going to get her to use those legs as she develops as a rower. It's working on her grip primarily because she tends to cock the wrists on the drive. So we just put in a, a routine for her to use every time she starts. She's going to square the blades. Maybe she'll do it in just a moment here. Let's see. Okay, so she's squaring up the blades here. Checking to make sure her wrists are flat. Feathering out under the fingertips pulling the blades back into her body, and now she's ready to go from the release. Here we go. Hopefully that will help her remember 
not to cock the wrist because she's feathered out into the fingertips. She has a little bit of a habit of adjusting the grip so that her wrists are flat on the recovery as you see here and um, cocked up on the drive, which is a really hard place, really difficult to row with your wrists cocked on the drive. Okay, here comes the matching double. Everything's matching except the colors of their hats. Let's see how they're doing. They're rowing together here. about timing to see if their oars are going in together and finishing together. And they are doing the um, dragonfly pause still and they're doing it together which is great. Things look pretty controlled and smooth. Handle heights are all looking about the same wobbling back and forth, especially as they leave the release and come up to the catch right here, a little bit of wobbling. Hands are coming apart and being a little uneven. For the most part, things are looking much better than they were even a few hours ago. The wakeboard is gone and uh, these guys are doing, uh, I think they're very thankful, my guess is, for the better water. And uh, they're working really well together. Although here Henry's uh, rushing Steve a little bit. Steve understands that no matter what's happening in the boat, in the seat behind him, that he needs to keep that same rhythm and be very predictable and consistent. So even though Henry at times is getting into the water much, much earlier than Steve is, without as much patience, Steve is holding on to it. Come two strokes. Boats are also much faster when both rowers are rowing at the same power. So we talk a lot about pressure. Half pressure, three quarter pressure, full pressure. Rowing on the paddle is when you take all the pressure out and you're usually recovering from a race. Just need to contain him a little bit. Boy, does he have a lot of energy and strength. Steve's leading the way here. It's a little bit ironic that you lead from the stern of the boat, but we don't want Henry to take strokes too early. We want him to be following Steve. can't see behind him, so it's most important that Henry do the following, and Steve do the leading. It'll bend in the arm very early for Steve here, but he's, he's come a long ways in just a few short weeks. I think it's been uh, about three and a half weeks here on the water. Athletic, determined, persistence. Numbers start from the bow and go up to the coxswain seat, which is a little screw. Because I hope you brought socks. You got socks. Good. Somebody else's nasty feet have been in here. Uh, the foot stretcher is adjustable. This is called your rigor. This is your oar lock. It unscrews. And you lift the gate up. You put your oar in. Close it. And then you tighten it. Nicholas, if you can tighten that back down for me. Uh, same place.
place to step in the boat is only where you see the reflective tape. If you step here and stand up, you could go right through the bottom of the boat, and then we're out of boat. So and square it in the oarlock, it clunks into place. This will get you a crab, because as you take the stroke, you come back, it slices down to the bottom of the lake, and you won't be able to get it up. So it's square when it goes through the water, comes out of the water square, and then it feathers. Questions? Yes, uh, for, all, for those of us who have been in the uh, quad, Yes. With, with the two oars, is there going to yes. be a different feel yeah. with one oar? Yeah, you, you, you just have one thing to worry about, so it should be a, a whole lot easier. Okay, but the technique is still the same, except I've got, and I'm going to have two hands on the oar, though. That's right. So the outside hand goes right at the end of the oar, okay. and the thumb goes underneath. And that's the hand that governs the height of the oar, so it controls everything. It doesn't need to touch the gunnel, and it shouldn't be up by your nose. You don't want to pull in here. I'm going to pull in nice and flat. Um, okay, let's get hands on. Everybody on that side of the boat, please. So here we have Faith Coxing, and um, we have an experienced rower in stroke seat. She's been on the water for about four weeks this year. And then in seven, six, and five, as well as out in two seat, we have um, guys that have never been on the water before. Um, three and four have been rowing for a little bit. So we're learning how to set. We're learning how to swap in pairs. And right now we're only rowing arms and body and square blades and this is the first time we're learning how to swap pairs so five and six is going to drop out here and bow pair is joining and we just lost the set so three seat is having trouble getting his blade in and out of the water there we got tim came to the set Carson's hands are a little high. Tom's good. Lauren, <clears throat> Lauren, put your hands down a little bit. They're up too high. Sure. Watch the timing, please. Watch the timing all together. In and out together. Okay. 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 In two, we're going to row our in there. We're going to add three and four out. And turn there back in.
first time on the water rowing, and you can see we've got bow six moving together for the most part, squaring and feathering, using their legs on the drive. We'll 